My guess is that you've probably heard this song before. But have you heard it this way? Or this way? Today we're going to take a look at River Flows In You, but we're going to reimagine it through the left hand. And this is going to be a lot of fun. We're basically going to go over three different left hand patterns that you can use. An Alberti bass pattern, a waltz bass pattern, or a combination of octave and large chords. And what's awesome about this video is you can take these left hand patterns and you can actually apply them to any piece that you're working on to reimagine the left hand to totally change the sound of the piece. And I love doing this. I love taking music that speaks to me and creating my own arrangement of these pieces. And so this is what you're going to learn how to do in this video. Let's dive in. The original version of this song that I'm using for this video uses broken chords in the left hand. And depending on what piece you're looking at, you might have a variety of different left hand patterns. What we first need to do is we need to take the original piece and we need to figure out what the chords are. Now this can be done by using your music theory knowledge if you have a music theory knowledge of chords or it can be done by simply going to Google and doing a Google search for a lead sheet or for the chord chart for the piece that you're working on. And you're gonna be able to find most things on the internet. I'm using a piece that's in the key of F sharp minor, so that's the key that we're gonna be looking at. And whatever piece your key is in, you would find the chord chart that matches that key signature for your piece. So the chords that we're gonna be using for this piece are F sharp minor, that's the first chord, and then D major, and then A major, and then E major. And those are the four chords that we use for this piece. You'll notice if, if you look through the left hand of River Flows In You, he, the composer uses a couple of uh, sevenths in those chords and there's a couple of different like added notes and things, but we're just gonna take the chords at the most basic form because it's gonna work and it's gonna sound like the song. And then we're gonna look at our music and we're gonna start to play those chords at their most basic form with the music. F sharp minor. D. A. E. Do that many times until we really start to feel those chord changes and we can kind of hear them and we become familiar with them. Then we start to look at these different patterns. To make an Alberti bass pattern what we do is we take the bottom note, top note, middle note, top note. That's it. It's just that formula and we apply it to all of the chords. So we can take our F sharp minor chord and we play F sharp, C sharp, A, C sharp. We do the same with the D major chord. D, A, F sharp, A, and then with the A chord, and then with the E chord. And we can practice this over and over and over again until that pattern starts to get into our muscle memory and we start to get a context for how that sounds and how it feels. And then we need to work it in with the right hand. So whenever we're reimagining a left hand in any piece, we have to pay attention to the rhythm and we have to know how many notes in the left hand are going with how many notes in the right hand. Because our right hand is playing a lot of eighth notes, it would be really easy with this Alberti bass to play eighth notes in the left hand. So everything would line up with one and two and three and four and, and it would sound like this. Now you'll go slow and you'll practice maybe one measure at a time or little small sections at a time until you start to get how it feels to play it together. And then once you get comfortable with that left hand and once you get comfortable with the idea of putting it with the right hand, you can just play and you can have fun. And this is one of my favorite parts of reimagining pieces is that you can play things up high on the piano, you can play things low, you can play around with the range between the hands. You can keep the hands close together, you can make them move far apart. You can also play around with the inversions of the chords in the left hand. And if you don't know what that means, that's fine. You don't have to do it. You can just stick with what I'm showing you and it's going to be really awesome. But if your music theory knowledge is greater or your technical ability is greater, you can also play around with putting those chords in different inversions, meaning playing the notes in different orders or more spread out on the piano. And that will also give you a different sound. Now, the way I like to do it because I'm using a Western classical left hand pattern is I added a couple of ornaments in the right hand and I took away the pedal so that it totally changed the sound of the piece. And you can do this too. You can change the articulation 
inflection. You can play around with the right hand melody. You could even go off book and completely change the right hand melody and morph this into a different piece of music that uses the same chord progression. Let's look at the other patterns. So the next one I did was a waltz bass pattern. And that's when we take the bottom note and then the top two notes played together harmonically several times in a row for however many beats we need in our time signature. So since go through the same steps of practicing that left hand by itself with the chords getting really comfortable with that before you put it with the right hand but eventually when you get there just go ahead and play around with it and have some fun with it all right let's look at the last left hand pattern for this one we're gonna be doing octaves and then we're gonna jump to larger chords so what I was doing here is I was playing an octave of the bottom note of the chord so for the F sharp minor chord we'd go down and we grab an octave of F sharp and then we come up and we play the F sharp minor chord but we add an additional note so we play F sharp a C sharp and then we add another F sharp with our thumb and so the chord is larger the chord has an octave in it as well and it makes the texture of the left hand a lot thicker and it also increases the range that we're using because we go down to grab that octave and then we come up to grab the large chord it creates a really loud and dramatic sound and that's why I love this left hand pattern I use it a lot in my improvisations just to make things sound really dramatic so I'm gonna practice that left hand with every single chord and this one is pretty technically challenging challenging and technically demanding. So if this is beyond you, that's okay. Octave, chord, tons more things that you could do with the left hand of this piece, right? Because when we're improvising and when we're kind of creating something, really the sky is the limit. I could do any variation of those things. I could do a combination of those things to have different effects. And one of my favorite things is to just come up with a couple of different left hand patterns or a couple of different right hand melodies and then just go for it. Just give myself the time and space to play. And it's a really great way to reinvigorate your piano practice if you're feeling a little bit creatively burnt out or if you're feeling burnt out on your practice. Now I want to just dispel one myth, which is that when you see someone doing this, when you see someone improvising at the piano or taking a song and kind of making their own version of it, this is not an inherent thing that people can do. Some people might, you know, be born with like a more natural inclination towards this, but these people that are doing this have practiced it. I've learned these left hand patterns and I'm able to do these left hand patterns because I do them all the time because I practice them. It's not something that I just thought of and was able to do instantly. So when you're trying to implement some of this and when you're trying to do some of this, it's going to take a little bit of practice and that's normal. That's how we go about learning how to improvise. When we watch really amazing improvisers, musicians that can just pull stuff out and it seems like they're just making things up on the spot. Yes, they might be making things up on the spot, but their ability to make things up on the spot comes from hours and hours and years and years of practicing the skill of trying to create something spontaneously. And it's almost never completely spontaneous. It's based on pre-existing knowledge or pre-existing tools that they've practiced and worked on that they now have in their tool belt and they can pull out at any instant. So these left hand patterns that I'm giving you in this video, these can become tools in your tool belt. If you work on them and you practice them and you apply them in different pieces, you're going to be able to draw on them at a moment's notice and you will start to develop that skill of being able to improvise or being able to make something up on the spot. Now, if you feel like your chord knowledge is lacking and this is beyond you and you would like to start with like a good basis of chords, I have several videos that are about chords and you can go ahead and start there because that's going to be a really great way to help increase your confidence with chords so that you can tackle practicing or doing an exercise like this. You can go ahead and do that right here.